hey, there's nothing more frustrating than getting out on the water and having a problem with your electronics. But most of the time, it's not really a problem within the unit. It's usually a problem with wiring. So there's a few things that we go through and we check right away. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I had a problem recently myself where my unit kept cycling. It would start, shut itself off, start, shut itself off. And you know what? I got all paranoid that it was probably something in one of my graphs, but it wasn't. What it was was I had a low battery in the back of the boat. I had left too many switches on, left them running all day long, and the unit's actually designed to do that, to tell me I've got that problem. But there's a few other things that can happen when it comes to getting power to these graphs. And I'm gonna let Todd take you through some of the things you wanna check if you run into a problem out on the water. First thing that you wanna check is to make sure that all of your wiring, your connections, fuses and circuit breakers are operating properly. Uh, check all of your connections at your power cord. Here we have a good connection. This one here is uh, not tight for the crimp, which will cause to have no power at the unit. Make sure all of your connections and crimps are tight and functioning properly. Second thing, a lot of these boats, they have fuse boxes underneath the consoles or somewhere in the boat where we hook the power for the depth finders up. And you want to check those fuses, make sure they're working properly, and you have power on both sides of the fuse. Third is make sure in the back of the boat at the battery, all of your connections back there are tight, the circuit breakers are good, and the fuses are working properly in the back. One other thing you want to look at is if you're talking about a problem with just one graph and you're having trouble getting power to one graph, you're going to want to check at that dashboard and you're going to want to check back here at the battery. The other thing you want to take a look at is if you're having problems with multiple units and you've got an ethernet box in the boat, let's make sure we've got power going into the ethernet box and coming out. A lot of times you'll find out that the power is just not getting to that ethernet box and it'll be somewhere in between the battery and there. A couple other things that I want to talk to you about too when it comes to troubleshooting. There may be a time where you're out there and you're having a hard time getting the unit to do one of the things you're asking it to do. Sometimes this can happen and there is a function built in where you can actually restore the defaults. By doing that, you, you virtually reset the graph and you tell it to reboot itself. 99% of the time, that's going to fix your problem. But before you do that, I want you to do one thing. I want you to always check to make sure that you've got the most current software in there. As long as you've got the most current software updates in there, you're usually going to be just fine. Now, if you go through all these things and you're having a hard time getting it to come back to life and do everything you want, it's really simple. Make a call to Humminbird Customer Service, or at that point, call a, call a shop like what Todd runs here at Formula. They're scattered all over the United States. You can find somebody that's going to help you out. But if you follow most of those things that we talked about before we got to making that phone call, you're usually going to find that you're going to fix your own problem and be back on the water right away.